Welcome to Shakespeare the Sonnets. Today, we are doing son number 153. As many of you know, there are only 154 well, young lady, young youth sonnets. You can call them whatever you want. And afterwards, there are dark lady sonnets, which I may or may not do. But as far as I'm concerned, this will be the second to last sonnet that we'll be doing on the channel. Let's get to start with. Cupid laid by his brand and fell asleep. A maid of Diane's this advantage found, and his love kindling fire did quickly steep in a cold valley fountain of that ground, which borrowed from this holy fire of love a dateless lively heat still to endure, and grew a seething bath which yet men prove, against strange maladies, a sovereign cure. But at my mistress' eye, lost brand new fired, the boy for the trial needs who touch my breast. I sick with all the help of bath desired, and scissor hide a sad distempered guest, but found no cure, the bath from my help lies, where Cuba got new fire, my mistress' eyes. Here, Shakespeare going ahead and giving out a little bit of analogy here. Cupid, the god of love, well, technically the, also known as the angel, is going ahead and taking a little bit of a nap. And he's left his brand, which is still burning bright, over beside him. And so a maid of Dian's comes in, takes the brand, and uses this as a great advantage to use it as well, too. In, in response to that, she goes ahead and decides to ruin it by stinking, dunking it underneath a lot of water so that, well, that water itself would actually go ahead and destroy the fire. Instead, what happened was interesting. Well, the chief manager here, who actually was supposed to be there, the young girl went ahead and ran away when she saw this Diane's nymph did. So all of this... all that fire, it actually went ahead and boiled the entire... in the entire river. Or wherever this gold valley fountain will be. And that hot stuff? Well, all that turned into a bath. It apparently was very good skeeving medicine towards men who were able to go ahead and prove themselves worthy of it as well, too. As well as conditions where normal treatment would not actually work. Against strange maladies, a sovereign cure. Against other people, we might go ahead and find a literal cure ourselves as well, too. But at my mistress' eyes, it looks brand new fire. But we thought that... The the staff itself was turned off, but then once my mistress went ahead and looked at it from afar, maybe a little bit too long, it started reigniting its fire, going ahead and symbolizing either uh, Ero Eros's back or she's the new master of this brand. And since Cupid now realized what has happened, he also wants to go ahead and test out the literal fire created by my wife on me, someone who actually had no idea what this would be because he has terrible understanding of Reddit. I sick with all the help of Bath Desire, and Zizra hide a sad distempered guest. So I went ahead and did all that. Now what's the final test? Well, the final test is the hardest. It's to go ahead and defeat a celestial sapien. Basically God. In this sonnet, however, there is something else. But found no cure, the bath for my help lies, where Cupid got new fires, my mistress' eyes. And so I have new cure for all this as well, too. The bath for my help lies where Cupid got new fire in my mistress' eyes. But instead of going ahead and feeling all the sorrow, I go ahead and look at the person who went ahead and created, ha uh, created Cupid's happiness. It's this person, and you should be able to go ahead and do all those qualities as well, too. If you've read Sonnet number 153 properly, you'd understand that Cupid is a baby. It's still a baby in this time. And that his torch, or whatever you call it here, they call it a brand, touches water and just boils the water. If you dunk it completely, it burns out. But Eros, or in this case Cupid, can always bring it back, turn it back. And so that's song number 153. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope to see you guys soon. And next time, out. Peace. Bye-bye. Cupid laid by his brand and fell asleep. A maid of Diane's this advantage found. And his love kindling fire did quickly steep. In a cold valley fountain of that ground. Which borrowed from this holy fire of love. A dateless lively heat still to endure. And grew a seething bath which yet men prove. Against strange maladies and a sovereign cure. But at my mistress's eye, love's brand new fired, the boy for the trial leaves would touch my breast. I sick with all the help of bath desired, and thither hide a sad distempered guest. But found no cure, the bath for my help lies, where Cupid got new fire, my mistress' eyes.